Every time I try to run right, there's trials. I try to run left, there's tribulations. And then I go to the middle and there's their sister. Wahala. Hey babes. I am your mommy. I am your mom. My channel is Chicago Her Excellency. Welcome to the Royal Court if you're new here. If you're returning, welcome back to the Royal Court. I have missed you guys so, 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 so much. I haven't made a video in such a long time, okay? Such a long time. So today we're gonna be doing a um, chit chat, get ready with me. I'm getting ready to go to Dallas for Christmas. So I'll be doing my makeup and talking to you guys. A mini updates. I'll be telling you guys what I've been going through this year. Just small, just small. You know, we're really gonna get back into it. I always say that every time I leave my channel for a long time. But it's cool, like nobody is perfect, okay? Um, this look is inspired by the UK bodies. Oh my United Kingdom babes, you guys and your makeup. This look is inspired by Dumb. So um yeah, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to achieve this look. So like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, let's get into the look. How have you guys been? So guys, yesterday I tried to um arch my brows by myself. I tried to wax it by myself. Clearly it didn't turn out as I expected it to. So um, yeah, now we have very, very much given thin, given no longer existence, but it's cool. I'm grateful to, the, to God that I'm here today talking to you guys and being able to film this is just so like, something I didn't think would happen. Like I haven't, I don't think I filmed much this year. Every time, every time I try to run right, there's trials. I try to run left, there's tribulations. And then I go to the middle and there's their sister, Wahala. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a mess blood. It's been a mess blood. I just finished a uh, fast and prayer. Uh, just rededicating myself to God, just, you know, inviting God into my life to begin to make changes. For the most part, that has been very helpful. I feel like people rarely talk about what it's like, this Christian walk that we do. People rarely talk about how difficult it could be sometimes. And I feel like the world is always kind of in this notion that Christians are perfect when in retrospect is the complete opposite. Um, we need God because we're not perfect. And I think there needs to be a, a movement where we kind of humanize Christians because sometimes you can be going through something and you don't even know that the person next to you is going through the same exact thing because everyone is just trying to put up this whole whole front oh i'm perfect you know i don't sin and even if i sin it's small sin like lying or thieving even though all sin is equal but there is some that separates you from god more than others and even people of the world expect christians to be perfect to a sense we fall into this trap where even christians are like Kind of judging each other, thinking that maybe I have a better walk with Christ or have a better relationship with Christ um, than anyone else. But let me tell you, the only person who cares about your relationship with God is you and God. That's the only person that cares. And that's the only person that should care about your relationship with Christ. You should try to get to know God, yeah, but also remember that at the end of the day, we are human beings. Like, we're human beings and we have our flesh to deal with. Like this year, whoo, the foundation is looking a little orange, but it's okay. This year, I felt like I was attacked so much with so much anxiety and depression. Like in the beginning of the year, I was so depressed. Like I went through a really deep depression and that's something that we try to hide from each other. We try to make it seem like this walk with Christ is kind of all peachy and roses. And there's this taboo and admitting that yeah even though i am saved even though i am saved by the blood of jesus christ i do 
suffer from depression sometimes and by the grace of God I am saved by it because all, all in all it's all spiritual warfare yeah. I mean even though you should constantly be in prayer but come on we're not all that perfect where we're constantly in prayer like if you are big ups to you yeah I'm golden number one like I'm so proud of you but in reality that's not my reality i'm not perfect with prayer and i think like we need to see more people like that so we can encourage each other to to believe that yeah like you're not the only one going through that sis like me too i'm not perfect in prayer and i feel you but i genuinely i genuinely feel like we lack that humanity aspect of christians maybe that's what i'll title this video like let's humanize christians we need to humanize christians like for instance like i was watching i've been watching a lot of um a lot of series a lot of preachings a lot of sermons and i i hear a lot of pastors say that sometimes they don't even want to read their bible sometimes they don't even want to pray and i remember feeling like that sometime in 2020 i felt like oh like i just don't want to do my morning devotions like i don't want to do this like i was genuinely feeling that way and i felt i felt bad because i felt like i was the only person in the world who felt like they don't want to pray to god at that moment or they just didn't want to continue their morning devotions a whole week went by and i just couldn't bring myself to even do e devotions because honestly i didn't feel like that like but you know if we serve girls with some feeling we're not we're not gonna get anywhere to be quite honest but just the fact like you just feel so guilty because you feel like you don't want to but then you don't know that there's other people that's feeling like they don't want to either but everybody's over here doing holy 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 we are mighty 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 and so i was telling like girl like share your stories but like it does really make that much of a difference like just have Having people to share things with, having people to say, oh, um, today I'm just feeling, I'm just feeling sad. I don't feel like I could do it. Today I feel anxiety. Oh my God, anxiety? Am I the only one who faced major anxiety in 2021? Anxiety came for me, y'all. Like, I was a mess. Like, every project that I put out, because even though I wasn't on YouTube, I was still on Instagram. I was still, you know, doing my little Malin thing. Everything that I was doing, I was plagued with anxiety. And even though, like, I did pray, even though my prayer life wasn't that strong, I did pray. Um, and I was just filled with so much anxiety. Like, the devil was really pr playing with me. Like, it's, I didn't notice how bad it was. I didn't notice how bad it was until I was experiencing the anxiety in real time and I was just like, whoo, whoo. And I feel like that's what we need to just talk about as Christians. We need to talk about all these things. And then even, even people, like as Christians, we feel like, oh, we shouldn't be sinning. You shouldn't sin as a Christian. Don't get me wrong. You shouldn't sin. You try to live a Christ life, right? But let me tell you something, my sister, my brother has, it might happen. It might happen. Temptation is real. Even Jesus was telling God, like, Jesus was tempted to not die on that cross, huh? Like, Jesus was dead tempted to not die on that cross. He said, God, like, please take this cup away from me. But if it is your will, then let it be done. Like, there's a point where Jesus, he was about to be like, you know, but his, his discipline was to carry out the will of God. And I think that's what we all need to get to. But like, even back on the sin, right? You would think to yourself, oh, no other Christian is being tempted to do this thing. No other Christian is doing this. You don't know all of them. Temptation is real. And I think I love this um, new thing that a lot of pastors are doing where they are also humanizing themselves like a lot of pastors will share their stories because i remember pastor mike todd he came out and said that there was a time that he was addicted to pornography and everybody was going crazy like oh you are addicted to pornography you are addicted to pornography and it's like and they're like oh and then people of the world were saying oh this is your pastor this is your pastor this is who you are following addicted and then, He's a human being, one. And two, I rather follow a man who's able to admit that I'm human being and things happen, but this is how God saved me, than to be following people who are telling me, oh, well, you know, you going to hell. Like, what's more sin to do? You're going to hell. Uh-uh. Doesn't God forgive? Isn't that why Jesus died for my sins? For repentance? You know, so we could be, I could have the courage to come and repent, you know? 
but they don't tell you that. I feel like when I was Catholic, one of the major things for me, because you know, I'm, I'm just non-denominational Christian now. When I was Catholic, one of the major things for me was that I always felt like I was going to hell. I felt like no matter what I did, I would go to hell because and maybe I'm, and I'm pretty sure everyone's, I'm, this is no bash to Catholics. Like they are Christians. They believe in Jesus. They believe in God, just like we do. But like I said, everyone needs to find their foot in and their walk with Christ. They need to find what best serves their relationship with God. And being Catholic did not serve my relationship with God at all all I just felt like I was inadequate you know I was inadequate for God's love and I felt like I had to earn God's love I always felt like hell was a second a, a, like a go like if I had just done one wrong thing hell 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 and I just couldn't find myself I, I, I thirsted for God so much but I just couldn't find myself, my, my thirst being quenched because I feel like every time I told a lie, every time I, I did anything, I was set years back and I just couldn't, you know, I, I just could not. I couldn't form a relationship with God because I saw God as this like monstrous being at the time, I'm being honest, like at the time I saw God as this monstrous being that would just smite me down and he, any wrongdoing, he just busy, vasa, like he'll just run on. <laughs> it would just finish you there and that's what I thought and like I said this is not in constant anyone else's relationship this is my relationship when I was Catholic and um the, I couldn't relate to the priest like I, I just saw the priest as like very holy people which they are they are holy people but I just felt like damn like I could never be like these people with everything that I did and that's such a terrible way to live life like you really feeling like oh i need to earn god's love when it's like you can't go to heaven through good works like it doesn't matter what you do you can never be justified in the eyes of god he says it in the bible i think it's psalm 143 um yeah man cannot be justified in the eyes of god you cannot like no matter what you do you're not going to be justified in the eyes of god and i didn't see it that way like I saw it like I had to earn my place in heaven and I've been on this life for so many years and I still haven't earned it and now I'm just gonna go to hell. That's how I felt and it's such a toxic way to be raised because then you lose that special relationship that you could have had with God. Of course, God is always there but then it's like I missed my chance to form that bond at such a young age but I, it's never too late. Like it's literally never too late to give your life for Christ. And that's what I learned from being Christian. And it's never too late to give your life to Christ all over again. Whereas like um, when I was Catholic, I just felt like I just could not, I could not do it, mate. I just could not do it. And I wanted to so bad. I wanted to so bad show God that I loved him and I just didn't know how to. And now, I'm able to do that and that's not that's not to say that I don't mess up. I I do mess up and the Catholic guilt it's not necessarily a bad thing. I guess it's like conviction in a way, but it's just the teaching of like whatever you do you're never right with god that's how i took it in other people could take it in differently and they probably do like i said there's nothing wrong with the catholic church i am forever thankful for the catholic church because that's where i was raised in um if not for the catholic church i wouldn't have realized the importance of being close to god or wanting to go to heaven you know what i mean so it did bring up that thirst in me but it didn't quench it i don't know if that if that makes sense yeah so, um, yeah, so when I became Christian, uh, when I became non-denominational Christian, um, I started seeing Christians as human beings. I started seeing people who loved God as human beings. I didn't take them to just be like, oh, these, um, you know, uppity people. I saw it as like, oh, these people are just like me. But then sometimes I feel like we lose that in between where even in the Christian church now, People try to carry themselves like they haven't been through no trials and tribulations. I've been through trials, tribulations, and wahala. All three. Don't be here trying to make it seem like you're not going through anything and that you're perfect. When in all situations, we all get tempted by the devil to sin. We all do sin and we repent. That's what we do as Christians. Look at the Israelites, God's own people. I mean, there's definitely like a clear walk we need to do when it comes to Christ. And, um,. 
we need to encourage each other when we're doing it like stop judging each other like what's up with you like encourage people don't be like going to discuss them on your group chat or after now she'll say after now she'll say she's a child of god she is a child of god now you born now <laughs> now you born now like <laughs> of course she's a child of god she's just a child of god that's struggling right now and like she doesn't need your judgment. Not every time you be judging, judging, judging. Not every time you be condemning, condemning, condemning. Cause you two, you are going through trials, tribulation, and wahala. So, who are you to talk? Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't think so. So like when I finally opened the Bible and started reading myself, oh my Jesus Christ, I started to see how good and merciful God was and how much of a big teddy bear he was and how much he just wanted us to love him. And although even now that I'm saying this to you, like I know for certain that's who God is, like God just wants you to choose to love him and to help you and to direct you. Like sometimes I forget that myself and I slip up, but that's the point. We need to humanize this, these things. Like, and sometimes even though I know how much God loves me and how much he means well for me and how much spending time is is helpful to my development and my growth as a person as a christian um i still don't want to do it like i'm not going to sit here in front doing something even when you don't want to you know that's just what it is like when i don't want to i have to still find the ability to do these things and i think that's my problem in this grand scheme of things like still find the ability so comment down below tell me if you guys feel the same way i do get tired of worship i do get tired of all these things and there's fatigue in it all and everything that you do no matter how disciplined you even are. when i was looking for a church when i uh, decided that i wanted to be christian non-denomination christian rather than catholic it was hard for me because I also had that judgmental trait in me where I was like, oh, well, if I go to a Christian church, they're all gonna judge me. They're all just gonna be looking. I don't really like, I don't really like babes in the Christian church because they just be doing the most. But it's like, girl, if you don't, you the same way. Y'all be chatting with y'all friends. Y'all be doing this, doing that. Like, that's the same thing. Like, human beings are human beings at the end of the day. At the end of the day, God is still working. He, he's he's working on us like that's why it's called the works he's working you know it's not gonna be fine you're not gonna go to a church and you're not gonna find perfect people and if people try to make you make it seem like they're perfect honey honey stormy baby you look like mommy they're lying to you people they're definitely lying they're lying to you they're not perfect there's nobody that's perfect that's why it's called a walk with Christ and not a perfect finish line with Christ, you know? It's not called a foot stop with Christ. It's called a walk with Christ, like, and we need to understand that, like, people are not perfect, and we need to stop giving people that power to make it seem like they're perfect, when in reality, it's like, they're really not, you know? And we need to learn how to forgive and let go of things because like that's what the devil uses against us like someone would do something do you know like it's like when you're in a traffic light yeah and someone comes and just and just cuts you off i think it's yourself go off on that person tell that tell that you know tell that person you don't know who you're messing with you know you know and just show them pepe just show this person pepe because how dare they your pride now comes out you're not boasting how dare they do they know who i am do they know who i am koni koni ko this that that and you're telling yourself like you are you are it's like who are you and then you want to bass boss bass so you bass boss bass even though the holy spirit is telling you this it's the same thing you're a human being like we're going to do it you know um but don't just say oh i'm i'm gonna do it and that's an excuse like if you notice that there's something in you that's not christ-like you should actively work to ask god to help you take it away so he genuinely can like genuinely want it to i do think like we should start humanizing christianity because i do think that it's gonna help us a lot we're just trying to live a life that's that's pleasing to god you know we're we're in the races just like everybody else but they think that we think that we're better than them when that's not even the case. Imagine how many people that we can save 
as Christians if they can if they can relate more to Christians. I feel like the problem is people look at Christians and they think these people think they're better than everybody. When in when in retrospects, we're like we're just trying. I'm fighting for my life. Like we want people to go to heaven. Like. We want people to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, you know? And we need to humanize. We need to humanize Christians, you know? And that has what has, you know, that has brought me through my depression and anxiety. I'm happy to say I think testimonies are so important in, in, in Christian faith because, like, we love to see how God walk, works in other people's lives. We like to compare it to ours and have hope that God will do the same thing for us. But if we're over here making people feel like God is not gonna accept them because you think you're better than them in some type of way, it's not gonna help. Sisters going through the same thing that I'm going through and I see them preaching about how they overcame it. And it gives me hope that God is not finished with me yet. It gives me, it gives me hope that God still has a story to tell in my life. Like for instance, like I was watching the series, this woman was 64 years old and she just got married like this December, I think. Like, was it this December? This holiday period, yeah. She just got married and she's 64. This woman has been waiting to get married. This is her first time getting married ever. And she was just saying like what encouraged her was, like, you know, preachers and everybody um, encouraging her to be comfortable in her singleness and just encouragement you know in general is what kept her all this while waiting for God because it's not like she wasn't she's a very beautiful woman beautiful growing up and everything another thing I found weird was that people in her life was telling her that she would not get married like they were legit from a young age telling her that she would not get married what kind of nonsense is that like why would you say that to someone like, you know, like, that's how insecurities, you guys are speaking words into people's lives you don't even know, you're just talking rubbish. Like, close your dirty mouth. How can you be telling someone that they won't get married because she was thin, because she was a thin woman? Um, they were like, you know, she's, she's Nigerian. They're like, oh, you're so thin. What man would want you? But it's like, sometimes your family members could speak negativity into your life and be doing the walk of the enemy. <laughs> the walk of the enemy the work of the enemy and you don't even know where all these things is coming from and you're just accepting nonsense into your life because it's family member like just adding nonsense and rubbish onto your life you don't even know what it is like they build insecurities with what they're saying to people like young people i feel like as well we that are gonna be the new aunties and uncles we need to really be careful how we talk to our nieces we need to be careful how we talk to our nephew if you're not speaking life and goodness and the graces of God into their life, shut up your dirty, stinking mouths. Shut it. It's not helping anybody. All it gives is an open door to the enemy to use these insecurities against these kids. Like, don't be telling people they're not gonna get married. Who are you? Are you Jesus? Like, come on, that's that's whack. And I feel like that's how insecurities breeds in younger children and it follows us to adulthood and we start doing things subconsciously not knowing that it's because of those insecurities from our childhood, you know? It's one of the major reasons why I started my um, series, Securing Him, because I know there's a lot of things that has happened in my childhood has made me insecure about myself, and I've carried that into adulthood, and sometimes the way I behave or the way I react and my emotion is based on those insecurities that I faced through childhood, and I'm over here inflicting other people in with it because I don't know how to handle the insecurities. I didn't know that at the time um, that subconsciously that's what I was doing. And I do feel like, I do believe that what we do in our subconscious mind is one of who we truly are. That's the mind that we can't really control. We don't really know what's going on. Something that I have found um, interesting is that I'm learning that God doesn't really take away your insecurities. He just teaches you how to manage them. A major one of my insecurities growing up was my weight. And of course my aunts and my family, my aunts mainly, family members, um, they didn't let me um so many things that i did in life in order to um you know 
make it seem like those insecurities did not exist i tried to ignore it i tried to ignore like what they said didn't affect me but it affected me it affected me a lot growing up and it did have a, um it did have a way of making me behave and act subconsciously that I didn't realize until I came to Christ. And it's like, oh my goodness, you was doing all of this because of what? You know what I mean? Like, so it's situations like I've learned is a lot of these aunties don't even know what they're doing. They don't even know it. They just be doing it. And if you don't ask them, why do you even do the things that you do? They don't have an answer for you. I think that's what it is. They don't have an answer. They really don't know what they do. So it's like, you really have to forgive those people for what they did to you. But it's like, in your heart, you're like, why would you say this to me? You know? Why is it your business, you know? But you really have to kind of forgive them. You really do have to forgive them because to be quite frank, they don't know what they do. So, yeah. If there's any advice, the first step of overcoming insecurity and using it for your benefit is, um, well, one of the steps is to forgive. You. But yeah, guys, so that's what I just came on here to tell you guys. I'm still alive. Um, I'm delivered. I'm still alive. I'm grateful to God for my life. Um, this year has really been a year of trials and tribulations, trials, tribulations, and wahala. So oh, I'm grateful to God for bringing me through all of what I've been through because even though I feel like I haven't been through the worst, if I even hear back talk from UK babes after this video, hey babes, I am your mommy. Okay guys, I'm gonna do my hair and I'll be right back. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Just trials, tribulations, and wahala. And just, you know, humanizing Christians in general. Because at the end of the day, we're all human beings. We all go through stuff. We all go through temptation. And also, just be mindful about how you add to people's insecurities. Because you never know what people are experiencing. Um, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Like... Y'all, I hope you guys stick around for it. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me, even though I'm not as consistent as, as I should be. You guys are still there. Um, make sure you follow all my social media handles. I'll be listing them below. Um, I'm currently not on social media right now. I'm giving myself like a six month break, just so you know, Hulsa from a lot of things, but still follow me when I get back on there. I'll be sure to follow you back and interact back with you. But in the meantime, you can definitely catch me on YouTube because I do plan on dropping videos while on this social media hiatus. <laughs> yeah, and I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.